Hello everyone, this is Colossius, and welcome to Daily Game Review number 87. Today we have Golemar 11Q versus Jonas D 9Q. And as you can tell, it is a handicap game, so it's a two stone game between a 9Q and 11Q, and let's see how we can use those stones and how we can play against those stones. So first off, let me point out everyone, two stones should not be feared. It is not scary. It is just think of it as a negative 10 point handicap for your opponent. Think of it as this is an even game, but my opponent has 10 more points than me. The reason I say think of it this way is because I see so many people, so many people are going to play against two stones or three stones and think, oh, I have to play super crazy in order to catch up. No, you do not. No, you do not. The reason is if you play normal and just focus on making some simple combinations, eventually your opponent will make some slight couple point errors and the reason this is important is because if you play some overplay and try and make up for that two stone deficit very quickly you're actually going to give your opponent a bigger lead so right now two stones you're down by theoretically 10 or 20 points uh, or if you want to do theoretics uh, on Comey value or something like that you're down by like 12 or 15 points so theoretically you're down by several points yes but the way to catch up isn't to catch up 10 or 20 points at a time. It's catch up two points at a time. Try to find those little errors that will let you get two more points in your opponent at a certain spot. Or maybe three more points in your opponent at a certain spot. Don't look for those catch up in one move moves. Because they're very rare, very hard to find, and very unreliable. Especially at the higher levels. For example, if I asked you, if you were playing a Dawn level player and you were giving that Dawn two stones, how would you beat that Dawn level player? You would say, well, I can't because they're stronger than me. Well, yeah, that's true. But let's assume for a second that you have mastered the basics. How would you do it? You can't just rely on the Dawn level player to make a uh, reading error that Q players make and make some 10 point move. They're not, that, they're not gonna do that, it's not so simple. But yet pros can easily give Dawn level players two stones and easily win. The, d the thinking is you're not aiming at your opponent's like overplay mistakes that will just die or give you a gigantic lead or catch you up immediately in one move the idea is to catch up one point or two points at a time it's not about trying to make one giant uh mistake or force one giant mistake out of your opponent i will say after about four or five stones then the mentality has to change a little bit because you have to be a lot more aggressive however with two and three stones and sometimes even four stones just playing normal moves is good enough because your opponent will likely make a few errors and it's up to you to take advantage of those few point errors. Remember, this is supposed to be an even game with two stones. In other words, you're supposed to win by one or two points at the very end. So maybe you can come up with the two stones deficit in the end game. Who knows? But I really want to emphasize, don't overplay. Don't be super, super aggressive. It's only two stones. You can still treat it like an even game and your opponent will likely make a mistake. If they don't, then probably they don't need two stones against you. So let's go ahead and look at the game. And I think what I just pointed out will be some of the highlights and mistakes. So we see white immediately going for, uh, to stop the Shamari, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I would recommend though, making a combination as fast as possible as white. Make your own position, make your own combination. It'll be much easier to deal with. All right, white plays this way. Hmm, that's strange. Stick to Joseki. You definitely don't want to mess up simple Josekis in the opening, uh, especially when you are handicapped. So both players, make sure you know your Josekis. If you wanted to play this one, then don't play the Tiger's Mouth. Play here and then play here. That way it's still fine. This is also Joseki, so I'm not sure why he would play this one. All right, White starts uh, his own little thing, and I prefer this one. I think this one's a little outdated, but it's fine. It's still Joseki. All right, we play this, so now we're playing normal moves. Reasonable. Uh-huh. Um, I recommend this one for security in the corner or this one in order to reduce your opponent's position a little bit more. I wouldn't recommend this in-between move because the corner's still open and it doesn't go as far into your opponent's position as you could. The difference is, on the left, uh, here when black blocks with the diagonal, later there's a Tsuji at age 18. But if you had this move, then later there's not a Tsuji. 
though it's a little bit easier and a little bit stronger support for reducing your opponent's position and also you can potentially pincer and put even more pressure on the stone so it's a lot easier to deal with the top side if you don't want to deal with that deal with that or do that then just defend the corner with the normal move like this all right so black goes in the 3-3 immediately i wouldn't recommend it black there's no reason to go for the 3-3 immediately i think uh just defend your own position on top uh you could even just do this uh you could just block down and force your opponent to come in and attack white that would be a good good idea here um and i think if you want to go on the left then uh, an attachment might be a little bit better due to the fact that it'll get you a bigger corner or you'll get out on the side uh, but I think the top side is still is more important right now due to the fact that White can still pincer and come in and attack you. Probably a simple move will be fine. Uh, white, block. Fix. And then fix. And then net. This influence is important to affect the rest of the board, so I highly recommend sticking to Joseki. So I think White doesn't know Josekis. So White, learn your Josekis. Black. Easily escapes here. Very nice for black. Um, actually, black, you have to exchange first. And then escape. Because uh, I just I just saw this cut. Um, I suppose the cut doesn't work immediately. So maybe just Atari and then force black down. And this is good for white. So black, Atari first. This Atari is very important because it's your eyes. The eyes here are very important. And then you can no be out. And then it becomes very easy for black to live and escape along the side. Uh, in this case, black escapes and then gives up the corner, but now it's good for white because white got all those points, and now black is not completely alive. Black has a weak group, so this result uh, is good for white. So black, bit of a mistake. You want to make sure you stay alive first and fix yourself first before going crazy. Uh, third line, everyone, for eyes. Third line is good for eyes. Second line means you're desperate for eyes, but he's not completely surrounded, so he's not desperate for eyes. And actually, living on the second line is like highly unrecommended because it's very small for points, very easy to push around, and very ugly life. Therefore, just think, I want third line. If my opponent reduces and somehow makes it in, who cares? I run away then, right? And it's much more valuable. Living on the second line and letting your opponent just push you around on the uh, outside with just even something like this. Living on the second line is really ugly because it's very small and white will get influence. It's very ugly life so don't live on the second line white trying to go here and make life no reason to you're completely alive if you're worried just block and then jump and it's much more valuable this move is kind of in game it's not really big right now black responded so you got away with it uh on top pincer take the base this is not an invasion because it'll just give black a double honey so it's not good it's kind of like touching your opponent's stone there's no reason to if you're gonna do this, you may as well just do this. That way at least you have support. Um, otherwise, just go in. Just a pincer black and run away. Run away, destroy the top side points, fine. All right, black plays on the bottom. Don't ignore your weak groups, black. This stone's weak. You attack, and white is weak, so fight here. This fight is actually in favor of black, so definitely wanna fight here. So don't ignore weaknesses. I feel like I've said this almost every single video in this series. Don't ignore weaknesses. All right, black just gives it up. I would just fix here because this shape is highly unrecommended. This shape right here, I do not like because the 3-3 three, three is still open. You have spent three moves in this corner. There's no influence because white is on both sides. So you've spent three moves in this corner and yet white can still invade it. So just fix it. There is no invasion. That's 15 points of territory. Very nice, very big. However, if you play this and white invades, then you only maybe have six or eight points of territory. The difference is quite huge. And white will likely get, uh, white will probably get a co in here. Actually, I think this is a co for sure. Uh, so it looks like a co. So there's a co to destroy your entire corner and white will get two moves in a row somewhere else. And at this stage, it's quite valuable. So it's just fix get your points get your 15 points don't let your opponent get a co so easily uh just avoid the shape altogether it's too easy to invade white can play a co there whenever he wants so don't uh don't play this shape white however tries to uh i don't know what white's doing actually this move doesn't do anything yeah, this, uh this move also doesn't do anything i can still split 
So nothing move and nothing move. This is not a defense. It's not a reduction. It's not an attack. So I don't know what it does. It's not a defense because I can still split it. So it's definitely not a defense. So I'm not sure what those two moves were doing. White reduced on the left. No reason to reduce when you can just invade. Because there's no Moyo. So getting influence right here by reducing is not really worth it. So invading it is because you can just destroy the points uh, rather than just giving them to your opponent. Normally when you're thinking reduce or invade, well, if you can invade, it's usually better. However, invasion comes with risk. So sometimes it may be easier to just simply reduce and make points in the center equal to or greater than what you're giving your opponent or almost equal to because if you can do it in Sente, then you can go get something else. As long as the territorial equivalence is roughly the same or in your favor, when you reduce, you're fine. Uh, otherwise, if you can't get enough to match your opponent or enough to win the game or whatever, whatever reason, territorial reason, then sometimes an invasion is worth the risk. Sometimes it's just good because then you just destroy the points immediately and then black won't have that territorial edge over you. Uh, so this is a little bit soft. Uh, black, no reason to one point jump here. Just play here. If you're worried about the Hana, you can clamp and connect under. So just keep your points, keep your points. This jump, unnecessary. Hmm. Hmm. There's a cut. And I think it's worth playing immediately, even if black plays this way. Entire bottom size damage. Just give it two stones. So yeah, I think I would cut immediately. If black plays this way, then you can simply play this way and corn is in trouble. So just sacrifice two stones and cut. Just cut. The cuts just work. Ajikeshi, don't want to fix cut. Worst case, at least invade here and then threaten to cut. Don't play Ajikeshi. Don't play empty triangles. Empty triangles bad. Have bad liberties. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop here because so many bad shapes and bad combinations, uh, and I think that's what you need to work on in this game. So let's re-point uh, out what the mistakes were. Um, first off, a couple nothing moves right here. Second off, the combinations on top, the Josekis. White, I think uh, you need to learn more Josekis because you messed up this one and messed up the top one. Black, you're probably going to have to work out on your reading a little bit and your attack and defense a little bit. Do this, I recommend... Uh, what do I recommend? Attack and defense. It just comes down to experience, I guess. So you need more game reviews. So play more games. Get more experience. Maybe play some teaching games. Try asking on uh, online to get your games reviewed more often by stronger players. So that's, what you, that's mainly what you need, is you need better attack and defense ideas. So make sure you stick to those basics. Make sure when you can when you fix yourself, like for example, this move, make sure when you defend, it actually does defend and doesn't get cut. Um, be more efficient, learn your shapes. So I recommend for black, play more games, get them reviewed. White, learn your Josekis, and also play more games, get them reviewed, because uh, you need to work on your combinations as well. All right, so I pointed out a lot of shapes this game. So I think this game, rather than concepts, there was a lot of shapes and to learn. So hopefully you guys found this helpful. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.